Welcome to another Resources for Granges program in which we try to provide information and inspiration and stimulate your thinking. I'm Walter Bumsma, Communications Director for the Main State Grange, and our topic today is a little bit different. Uh, we're going to learn a little bit about how an exciting grange in Pennsylvania, uh, in southern, I always want to say this wrong if I look at the word, in Schuylkill, which if you've ever traveled on the Ex Schuylkill Expressway, it's called the Surekill <laughs> Expressway, um, in southern Schuylkill <laughs> County in Pennsylvania, was organized. And with me to talk about it is Amanda Rosanna Rio, who most of you know is our uh, she actually has this really long title, but I've short, believe it or not, I've actually shortened it to the National Grange Membership and Leadership Development Director. And she happens to be very familiar with um, what happened with Jefferson Grange uh, because she's the secretary of that Grange. And, and I think a key player in getting it, I don't know if started or reorganized is the right word. That might be a question to ask you. So thanks for being here, Amanda. Thank you for having me. This is an exciting program that you're hosting. Yeah, I really, I, I've been kind of chomping at the bit to do this since really almost late last spring, I think, when you guys first were getting organized. Um, now, I, I, I probably should know that your roles here are going to overlap because you certainly played a role in the formation of Jefferson Grange as the National Grange Da, 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 da. Um, but I think most of the questions or most of the, the stuff that our Granges are going to be interested in are really at the local level. You know, how did this work at the local level? So let's start with, how did this all get started? Sure. So um, as most people know, our staff are all members of the Grange. Most of us are members of Potomac Grange. Um, but the first Grange I joined was actually Jefferson Grange. And at the time, uh, you know, a little over 10 years ago, like many Granges, they had a membership that skewed older, uh, they had a hall that was in desperate need of some significant repairs. They had a very small number of members, um, and they had a very, we've always done it this way, um, or a uh, narrow view of what they could accomplish in their community. And I don't blame anyone because after a number of years volunteering, you know what works uh, for you, but you also know where you're willing to put in extra time. Um, to your community. And so the the role of that Grange in the community kind of felt smaller than what it could be. And after almost, well, a little more than 100 years in service, um, they closed in officially in 19, although it was several years before that, that they kind of stopped operating in Grange fashion and in having regular meetings and things like that. 19 being 2019. 2019, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, when they closed, um, and this is obviously pre-pandemic, um, our state president, Wayne Campbell, at the time had contacted me because he knew that was my home grange and he knew that I had uh, raised some concerns about the fact that it may close and, and really needed a jump start. Um, and the 12 members that we had taken into it in 2011 didn't do it. And part of the reason that it didn't work was because you were trying to force two subsections of people and cultures together, you know, and, and do it quickly. And 12 people coming into a grange sounds wonderful, but you know what happens in a lot of granges. We get our hackles up because you're going to take us over and you're going to change us. So um, that, that did not work. So when he called to say they had officially closed, he'd like to reorganize them. Um, I said, I don't know that you're going to get a lot of those folks back. And I also don't know that you'll get uh, a lot of folks in the community who, you know, have some concerns about some of the folks who are in membership there because either they've had these experiences of uh, going and not, you know, really feeling welcomed or having their voices feel heard. And so um, I kind of laid, laid back a little bit. Um, but when we moved home here in Schuylkill County, um, late last year um, to be with my dad, it was one of my first things that I said to my husband is we're going to have to get Jefferson back up and running because I want a home Grange. <laughs> um, and in the meantime, they had, of course, sold the hall that had deteriorated even more in about the 10 years in between um, and it had black mold. And it was just really 
in a complete state of, of disrepair. So that was sold. Um, and so there was money in the treasury from bonds and things like that, as well as the sale of the hall that was being held in trust. Oh. But outside of that, there were no real other assets. And the members who had been there, um, because of that kind of culture that had started and manifested itself, um, I decided I would rather contact later after we had a footing um, mm -hmm. so that there wasn't an automatic um, culture of we can't do this or we've always done it this way. Wow. So um, the folks that I contacted about joining, a lot of them were folks I had gone to school with or known for a long time, but they're all, a, I mean, the, the majority of our membership is all around my age. They look a lot like me. They're late 30s or early 40s um, and then their kids who are anywhere from littles to late teens um, and the point that I kept saying was we did a lot of stuff my friend group when we were in middle school and high school did a lot of stuff um, in our community to do service and things and it was time to pass those values on to their kids it was time for their kids to do what we had done um, not the same things mm -hmm. but to really have that opportunity and experience. And I thought the Grange was, obviously, I, I think the Grange, working for the Grange, being in this position, I think the Grange is one of the leading ways to do that. So um, luckily I had a bunch of people agree. And our first meeting we had uh, 15 people that by the end of the charter, we chartered with 24 and we're at almost 40 now. Wow. And we <laughs> chartered, we started our charter at May 21st, we closed it and sent it to the state in June. Our official charter date, is, I believe, is the 9th of July. Um, but we chartered, like I said, with with uh, almost half of what we have. Two I, I was going to say, you've almost doubled your membership in, uh, I, can't, I can't, count, yeah. can't do the counting, in what, le less than three months. Yeah. And uh, our um, president was the wife of the former president there. He was one of the only younger people. Um, and while they're divorced now, her and her daughters um, are part of our Grange and um, they both hold office right now as well. Um, mm -hmm. But themselves and me are the only connection to that former Grange right now. And so we are, we are just now that we have our own projects and some of our own, um, just some of our own culture that's taken root. Um, trying to see if there's anyone from that older group but there's only a, a few of them left in our community several have passed away or, or moved on or whatever so um it's just now that we're starting to say okay it's time to reach back and see if any of them want to be a part of this mm -hmm. um because any negativity that would have come in those first meetings would not have helped us be able to do what we're doing now yeah yeah and i think that's a important decision i mean it's not to keep people out but it's to decide when to integrate you know well, yeah and and i think that and you know you and i always have this tendency to go off into the weeds and and we want to be careful today because there, there are some really important things to, to cover but but I, I think it's so true i mean i've had people say well anybody we should welcome everybody we should welcome anybody to the grange and and I always go kind of, oh, well, <laughs> I'm not so sure. I mean, um, they're, 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 yeah, one that you, it's funny because you reminded me, and I, and I will keep the names out of it, but um, there was a story of a Grange here in Maine. This is quite a few years ago, actually, but um, that, that reached the point where they said, well, we got to close. You know, they, 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 we just can't do this anymore. And, um, and after they started the process, it, it truly was exactly what you've described there was a faction there were two factions in the grain um and and one of the factions and it happened to be the most negative which was sort of interesting in and of itself so well after this grange closes we're going to start it up again i was like what <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck. <laughs> you know, uh, um, can't wait to see. How it, it didn't happen, but but it would have been interesting to see how that that could have worked. So anyway, it sounds like you had a lot of things going for you, um, and and clearly some obstacles. 
Um, so let's um, get kind of right to how you did it. Right? I got uh, one of our deputies um, here, here in uh, Maine recently made a comment on one of the posts on the website. And he said, if you make it, they will come, which is an obvious takeoff from um, if you build it, they will come. Um, but when I looked at your website, <clears throat> it becomes very apparent fairly quickly. And, and by the way, I will put that link um, and some other information about Jefferson available to our listeners, viewers, um, both in the comments on YouTube and, and available on, on the website where this um, will be hosted. Um, but um, when I looked at your website, it became apparent that you guys did some stuff. I don't know how to say this other than differently. It's a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, at least at least by the typical conservative Grange outlook um, so we may need to schedule and you and I've already talked about scheduling some additional programs with some of your your officers and members to talk about some of those things um, but I guess the the question I, I think one of the questions that's going to be foremost in a lot of people's minds is how did you get these members I mean how did you double your membership in less than yeah. three months after being chartered um, part of it was very being very intentional. Um, yes, I went and I relied on a bunch of people that I knew from high school and, and friends and things that I had made, which anyone can do. Um, but it's also about making sure that there's people beyond your circle, because if one person, which we often do, we often say, bring us your 13 people. Um, if one person is bringing all of the people in that are connected to them, if they leave or become disinterested, um, and just the the nature of who the people are that will be charismatic in bringing these folks together, mm -hmm. um, they are also people who get engaged in many things and don't always stick with the many things completely. So oftentimes new granges but fail and obviously you know, we're only a few months in, so I, I hope that doesn't happen, but I can't guarantee it, right? right. But um, intentionality was really a big key of this. I had been looking at, and, and the reason that I waited even from November until May was not because of winter, which I know all of us in, in the <laughs> you know, upper curious. part of the country assume that, right? <laughs> yeah. But it was because when, when I got here and we got established, I started immediately looking in our newspaper, which we get every day for people that I thought were going to be Grangers. They're hmm. Grangers and they just don't know it. Um, so I had my cousin that I thought would be a good Granger and I had my school friend and her husband and their two kids and my other school friend and his wife and their two kids who, you know, immediately came to mind. But um, I needed to find people that were already doing things that were a little bit outside or beyond the normal um, that were somewhere in our communities already who would carry the the load um the days that i'm not here when i'm traveling for work or if there's a project that i'm not as sold on and i want them to do it but i may not want to be the one pushing um because we all know we can be the easiest anchor <laughs> um <laughs> you know the, the organizers especially the the people who are really the most you know pushing for this thing to happen it can sometimes be the, the biggest, we don't do it that way, <laughs> people, <laughs> and I don't want to be that. So um, I found a girl who had at 14 established her own business, at 16, 15, 16 established a community garden in our area, and prior to that had established a small one in her residential community. Um, and she's a Borlaug scholar, and she's, you know, she's just an amazing person, and I knew nothing about her and I don't have any contacts with 16 year olds typically um so I had to you know chase down a few people who could get me in contact with her um and reach out and make that true cold call of this is where I found your information this is how I got in contact with you and this is what we're starting and I really think you fit and here's why um and the pitch was a little different not because it was gaslighting someone but it's a little different to talk to the 16 year old and invite her and her mom to come to the first meeting and they're interested in agriculture. Truly, there are founding principles right there uh, to someone who was more in the, the area of 
community development who had worked for a community development organization here um, who's retired. And while she still volunteers there, you know, this is going to be in her hometown. She's a person who can connect everyone. Um, and she's always extremely supportive of local nonprofits and, and local organizations that connect and convene people. So yeah. reaching out to her. Something you said, I think is, is it, uh, I want to make sure people heard that or pick up on it because I think it, it's, it's a subtle but very important distinction. When you started talking about we're starting, you know, we're starting something. Um, and, and I hope everybody <laughs> follows this because it wasn't that you were starting a Grange. I mean, I, you know, you were starting, I'm going to call it a movement. <laughs> And even that might not be totally accurate, but but you were starting a movement, a community resource. Um, you were starting something that just happened to be a Grange. Right. And it, it, it's a great fit. Uh, and there's a little bit of chicken and egg involved, obviously. But, but at the same time, you know, because I, I think, and, and truly, I hadn't thought about this till today when, when you said that. I think that's a mistake we often make. We, we, we are promoting the Grange instead of promoting what the Grange does. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, yeah, choosing I, what this Grange is going to do. I mean, if you really think about it, we all can agree that every Grange is different. And so that means that any Grange can do anything that it wants to do, right. which means when we say the Grange, we can mean one of 400,000 things. <laughs> yeah. Um, at some point in this process, you had to pick, we had to pick what those key things were that this Grange was going to focus on. That doesn't mean we dictated the ideas and the projects and the things that would come out of it, right. but it does mean we selected people who were behind a couple of key ideas. And for us, local mm -hmm. resiliency and sustainability is the big one. Mm -hmm. um, and that gets broken out into, I, I mean, I'm using the big words here, right? And big fine. concepts and that gets broken out into multiple things, but Local resiliency and sustainability are, are its key ideas right now because we all just experienced a pandemic where we saw how much it, how important it was to have people in our communities who could do, who could act for others, mm -hmm. you know, act on behalf of the betterment of the community. We needed the people who would start the phone call chains, who would gather the cards to take to the healthcare workers, you know, because that's all mental health stuff. Yeah. We needed people who would check in on their neighbors. We needed people who would get the food bank together that we had never had in our town. We saw our grocery store shelves bare in a way mm -hmm. that we have not seen in generations. Um, and so there is certainly a key element of that that's food related. Um, and we saw because of the pandemic, because of what, what you know restrictions were put on a lot of businesses and things a real um hit to main street if your main street wasn't already half empty and decimated after the pandemic started it kind of was you know yeah. because yeah. these shops were closed they were they were forced to find new ways to reconnect with consumers um and all of a sudden you realize that when todd is out of work that's my neighbor you know, yeah. it's not just another unemployment statistic. And so, um, you know, that's all stuff that, that any one of our Grangers can be talking about because we all experienced it and yeah. we will remember it for a number of years. Yeah. Um, so the intentionality of what we were doing as far as who we were bringing in, but also as far as what those discussion points were, we want to make sure that we build this sense of community because that's an underlying foundation for everything else. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that we are promoting some of our local entrepreneurs, farmers, businesses, because when they are falling on hard times, our community falls on hard times. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking whether you're red or blue or your tax dollars or you're this or you're that. I'm talking about like your kid's softball team that can't have a sponsor this year. Right. And so how do we get new uniforms? Uh, you know, those type of things are all impacted by what we feel and, in those you mentioned businesses um, and, and that, that you created a great segue there <laughs> because one of the things I, I really wanted to ask you about and have you talk about for a few minutes, and, and I'm not sure, frankly, I totally understand it, 
is, um, and I think you call it a partnership, partner with us, um, mm -hmm. that partner with us concept, because that to me is just, I mean, I, I think, man, you're really onto something with this, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so in fact, this is gonna be the discussion of one of our membership matters Zooms in the, a couple weeks, but we have, benefits for members you know you're a grange member congratulations you get 10 percent off your hertz rental and you know tickets at work access and for main state grange you might get an accidental death and dismemberment policy for example or something like that um but we're missing that local element everything about grange is grassroots mm -hmm. and local and so um we reached out to a number of businesses we're bringing a couple more online in the next two or three weeks um but said to them like look, we want to encourage our folks to shop local and to, you know, spend money here and support you guys. Um, and these were folks who are already doing a lot in their community. And so we asked them to partner with us. And that can be anything. That could be $5 off of a hundred, you know, dollar purchase. And if you're at a $97 purchase, you don't get it because it says five off of a hundred. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, it could be a free soft drink with your, your meal. It, Whatever is comfortable in your financial budget um, is what we're looking for. But we've had, and of course we're rural Pennsylvania, so it's not a shock. Um, our first person, he actually came to one of our meetings, he and his family, um, they're interested in, in being partners, but not yet joining because they've got two little kids that they're, they're spending a lot of time with other things on right now. Mm -hmm. um, but he offered, you know, 5% off of a certain item in his, shop and 10% off of another type of item. Um, and then we had a local pizza parlor who said, you know, th this is just automatic, you know, 10% off your any purchase at all. Um, and I think that those are really important because when we're looking for sponsors for our softball uh, event in October, those are people we can go to and say, can we hang the flyers? Can you give this to some of your peers? And sure, if you want to sponsor it, you're already a fantastic partner. You know, but if you're willing to, that would be great. It's a it's a great way to also tell our members that you said you care about local. You know, they care about you. Mm -hmm. um, but if we're ever going to ask them to give us a gift card for a raffle basket or anything like that, we need to be shopping there. We need to be spending our money there. Um, because too often, I think Granges go out, any any organization goes out and says, can you give me? But there's no kind of proof in the pudding that they're also giving back. The wallet doesn't always come out. Yeah, I, I yeah, boy, yeah. And, and I think it, it I mean, I, again, looking at the stuff I saw, um, there was a, um, I'm trying to do some technical things here while I'm talking, which is not working real well. Um, the, um, there were some things I saw that made it very clear that it was a it was a mutual benefit that um i mean I'm, I'm just sitting here and i'm thinking gee whiz um a couple of years ago there was a honestly i'm not sure i think it was a beauty parlor um in our area that um collected school supplies um uh, for the uh, backpack program um and and in retrospect i mean that's that's something that um we could have, we maybe should have tapped into because we do our dictionary program and speaking of our local brain um and 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 i would just say quickly because it, it, we, we're going to run out of time here and there's so many things we can talk about we're definitely going to have to have more of these conversations but one of the things valley grange has done is is attempted with some with actually some great success to partner and when i say partner with communities i'm talking about municipalities uh, mm -hmm. where we have asked towns to support us financially sure. uh, and been able to demonstrate that we are providing benefits to their towns. So I, I like this whole partner um, thing. And, and, and I really feel like that's something we, we want to explore some more um, in a future program. Uh, yeah. There's a couple of other things I want to get to. Um, this I'm Walter Boomsma, Communications Director for Maine State Grange. If you just kind of come into the middle of this, you could do that, I suppose. I'm talking with Amanda Rosanna Rio about an exciting new Grange, uh, Jefferson Grange in Pennsylvania. Um, one of the things, <laughs> we, I like rocking boats occasionally. I, I tell my students in my adult classes, I'm a cage rattler. If nothing else, I'm gonna rattle your cage and make you think. And if you disagree with everything I've said, then I've accomplished what I set out to accomplish. Um, because I think this is gonna go down hard 
for for some of the people in our culture um and, and i i hate to have to do this quickly but um we got to talk about how jefferson grange titled some of their positions some of their directors um and i noticed for example on the website you have a civic engagement director that's mm -hmm. kind of cool uh personal development and family activities director um just quickly tell us about how that how that came about and, and and how you see that working sure 10 years with grange i know that every grange is breaking some rule if you want to look at our giant <laughs> book right yeah. um and i know some of the rules that or things that are part of our culture that we constantly get asked about especially by new granges so one of them is what do these positions do or do i have to keep the gender requirements or barriers for officers or different things like that and so i had asked our our state president and our national president to pilot some stuff with this Grange. Um, we elect positions like Ceres and Pomona and Flora, and at least Pomona and Flora and local Granges typically don't really have a role if you're not doing, um, especially if you're not doing the full form setup, but you know, if you're not doing degrees and stuff. And so um, part of what we see is we ask people to get elected to something and then we continue to ask people to be directors of things. And so we looked at the charges of, of what Pomona and Flora and Ceres and things are, are doing in the meetings and then also what they're charged to do in the installation charge. And instead of having those officers, we are not calling them officers, there are directors, they're elected directors, but they are directors um, of the same things that you would find directors in your local grange. There is typically a legislative director in your local grange. There's typically a family activities director in your local grange. So we're not making up something really new um, there's typically an agriculture director in your local grange, but we're just putting those in the positions of some of the, the officers that don't tend to do anything <laughs> in the average meeting of an average grange, especially a grange that's not setting up in full form. And a brand, brand new grange with only one or two or three people who have ever granged before, mm -hmm. it's almost impossible to ask them to come in and start setting up a meeting and walking with staves and having stations. I mean, we don't even have stations. That's that's not something we own. Uh, we don't have a hall. We are we've met, met in a pavilion. Um, it, it is truly well, an open air meeting. There is no secrecy in a pavilion. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, but at the same time, it was really important that we're going to deviate from some of this, and we are going to take away some of that ritual and traditional stuff but how do we make sure we're still a grange and not a garden club right. and and i am really really at, at all levels in my job i am really concerned about making sure that you can deviate but where is the distinction between just a club that could be anything else and being a grange mm -hmm. um, so we still have some connection point so we still care about being part of this and so for that um we did shortened versions of the opening and the closing and, and not with the response, for example, to the vice president, the steward, the gatekeeper, and those type of things, but just the very quick and, and to the point parts, uh, prayer, the pledge, those things are still part of our Grange meeting where they've been stripped out of some other ones. Um, and that was important to make sure they're there. But also one of the things that we've talked about previously and, and one of the things that everybody will see starting after this convention in November is we have put in place a reading that comes from something in the manual, something in the blue book, something in the, the degrees. Um, and so each meeting, we have our lecturer, somebody who will read the sentence or two and reflect on it um, so that there is still that connection between our teachings and our big principle stuff and our local everyday meetings so no we don't have a flora we have a food and agriculture director mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. who happens to be that 16 year old girl oh, wow. who happens to think it's amazing that she is a director of this organization that's part of a national structure we got to get uh, her on this program <laughs> I, yeah, I definitely need to get her again i mean time. seriously you know, well and that. she you know, the the cool thing about her is that's the one I reached out to, you mm -hmm. know, just out of the blue and didn't know her. And she realized how important it would be for her to connect to an organization like ours too. 
because she leaves her college next year. And the community garden she started that has a sponsor and has a, a bigger umbrella organization that also helps, they're not the let's put our fingers in the dirt type of help. They're typically mm -hmm. the anybody want to come out and help or like, here's some money to help, which are great organizations. Sure. But she literally needs fingers in the dirt to keep this thing working. Yeah. And she is reestablishing the greenhouses at our high school. And after she leaves, there are going to have to be some community folks who help the students to get those greenhouses to manifest into you know, not just the, the one year project, but the multi-year thing. Yeah. So it was really cool to make that connection that I would have never made otherwise by just looking in the newspaper and seeing who's getting attention. Mm -hmm. Certainly we're missing other people in our community who could be great Grange members, but at least we're getting outside of the circle. Um, and in doing so, we got somebody who'd never heard about Grange, who's perfect for Grange, who sees Grange as something that will help her ultimate goals as well. and who's taking some of these Grange ideas and principles that we have in that manual that we stick away for once a year, mm -hmm. oftentimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if that. And actually <laughs> hearing them and, and talking about them and putting them into practice, yeah. you know, so when she goes to college, maybe she continues with this or at least has a much better sense of historically what Grange was and currently what Grange can be. And I think that that's also important because those are our ambassadors, whether or not they're ever given a sash or a crown. Right, right. Yeah, it, it, you know, boys, you know, so many things come to mind here. I mean, people join the Grange for their reasons, not for our reasons. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think, uh, you know, I, I'm in the process of writing my teaching philosophy. I figured after 40 some years of teaching, it might be time to do that. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but one of the things that, that um, is probably going to end up being uh, a theme or a thread through it is that learning is a discovery process. Um, and, and I think uh, I'm listening to you and I'm saying, you know, wow, you know, maybe the key to this is letting people discover the Grange, not, not trying to push it uh, out there, but letting people discover us. And, and uh, my wheels are just going 100 miles an hour right now because I can, I can see we blew some great opportunities in, in, right here in, in my home area. I mean, there were two little girls. Uh, I honestly don't remember their exact ages, not old enough to be Grange members. They were less than 14. I realize they can be junior Grange. <laughs> um, but um, they started, um, and I honestly don't remember what it was called, not exactly a food cupboard, but they started uh, with one of our local shopkeepers, uh, grocery store owners, who is very community minded. The shelf in the store for nice. people who needed help. And I look at so cool. why the hell were, I'm sorry, why the heck <laughs> weren't we involved? I get excited. Why weren't we involved in that? You know, well, I, and I, I'll tell you that the one thing that we decided to do at our last meeting, which I'm super excited about because I think that this is exactly what we're talking about doing, um, is there have been people covered in the paper since then. And a couple of them, mm -hmm. certainly we've reached out to, but some of them that obviously um, we ha haven't had contact with or whatever. And beyond just asking them to join, which is a very selfish thing. Yeah. I mean, yes, there's lots anyone gets out of being a Grange member. But if you think about it, if I just contact you, and I say, hey, mm -hmm. I saw you, I think you should join. Uh, it, it doesn't feel as selfless as it could. Um, there's some young people who have, set up their own lemonade stands and, and raise money for the local library. A guy who, a, lo, a local young man who grew a garden in his backyard and he's selling the produce by donation. And all of the donations are going to a uh, medical charity of some, for somebody, something that someone in his family has. Um, and there's a local sensory garden that has been created for kids with autism and things that won a, a statewide award. We're writing letters thanking them for their contribution to the community, thanking them for their concern for others, you know, and providing a little certificate from our Grange. They may not know who we are, but after they get that, they will. Um, and inviting them, of course, to come to one of our meetings if they'd like to tell us a little more about their project or why it was important to them. Because we may have 50 extra dollars that we could give that kid's charity, or we may impress him enough that he wants to join and help create a fundraiser that could raise 500. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there's tons of opportunities for both them and us. Um, but 
for the people who aren't members who we're sending these type of things to, I mean, it's showing you that somebody recognizes what you're doing, appreciates what you're doing, and says to you, this is the type of activity and work and investment in our community that we want to support, that we appreciate, because it makes our community better. It, it raises the quality of life, which is what we talked about from the very beginning. Yeah. And so um, I hope those turn into members. I certainly hope that the kid who was too young, the, the girl who was too young to be a Grange member, but who could be a junior, and we have a ton of juniors right now. We have 14 or 15, so we'll be probably <laughs> chartering soon at Junior Grange. But, um, you know, they come with their families. They sit in our meetings. Yeah. They they do some activities off to the side, but they're engaged in the conversation. Yeah. And they learn those values from somewhere. I mean, if they are doing the lemonade stand, mom or dad said yes. Yeah. Grandma said yeah. that's a great idea. Somebody said said Somebody. this is what we stand for this is what our family name you know should be attached to so yeah. you know it, it I, should make an impression on mom or dad too i've said for a long time that we're we really aren't taking advantage of uh, if we want to be self-serving i guess taking advantage of the whole family thing you know it, we are one of the very few organizations that is so family oriented um, at least used to be. <laughs> uh, right. And and I think, you know, uh, that's an area that, of course, I, I'm beyond having young kids, although I've joked that maybe it's time, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, we um, have, have, we fooled around with this a few years ago at Valley Grange, and, and we even talked about, um, could we arrange to uh, have, um, I don't know, maybe like a daycare, not daycare, that's not the right term, but if people come to the meeting, what do we do with the kids? I mean, I personally like to see them sit in the meeting. I think there are ways to engage them in the meeting. Um, yeah. But we could also be providing care. Uh, you know, the junior Grange could meet, <laughs> if you will, at the same time. I, but one thing I want to get to, and, and here we go again, but um, is you are, I, I think, if my memory is correct, and I, I don't know if we have a lot of time to get into your total dues structure and everything, <laughs> But I know you've you've created a, or you, I don't know if created is the right word, a um, family plan. Um, and so uh, tell us a little bit. I, I am just blown out of the water. I wish you were closer because I would be at your Grange meetings just so I could play with the kids. <laughs> uh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, what so what are some of the things you did, I guess, to make it um, sure. more attractive for families to be part of this? So let me first say, this national grange says that juniors have a dollar a year dues whether or not most states collect those is you know whatever yeah. um, and you can have something above that so that's the first thing the second thing is national grange allows for what's called the family plan which puts anybody who uh mom dad or or dad dad or wh whomever <laughs> is in the household as a couple with dependents um to a certain age Mm -hmm. are allowed to go into a family plan. So for example, you've got mom, dad, three teenagers, and a, you know, seven-year-old. They only pay for two adult memberships. Um, some states have not implemented that, but some have, and ours has. Um, Pennsylvania also, in a way to try to encourage youth membership, has, they only collect dues from uh, youth up to the, the age of 24, um, or the national, so the $14 that national requires. So if you are 14 to 24, you're free um, for the state portion. So, um, <laughs> right. So, so I just want to kind of start, start yeah. there. So uh, when we had our first meeting, we talked about what our dues should be. We talked about the fact that $14 goes to national for adult memberships or you know, youth memberships. Mm -hmm. We talked about the Pennsylvania not collecting for the certain age group of youth. We talked about that $1 for juniors. Um, and we said, well, we also obviously need some operating money to do programs, to do activities and whatever. So if you're a completely unencumbered junior, which I don't know many 11-year-olds who are going to walk in by themselves and slap down their own money, but I mean, maybe, right? Um, <laughs> in theory, right? Maybe there's Uncle Walter who's bringing you know, his niece, right? right. Yep. Um, that is $12 a year. And that $12 will get you, you know, activities, programming. We're doing, uh, our junior director's talking about doing some tours and different things like that. 
Mm -hmm. Um, So there's no extra cost that will go into the parent's budget for having their kid be part of Junior Grange activities. If we can't pay for it out of the $12 a year for the unencumbered kids, Mm -hmm. um, then then we probably shouldn't plan it. That's our philosophy. Um, The family membership, of course, the juniors would be covered in there. Those youth would be covered in there. The the folks who are the the dependent youth. Um, And the family membership is $120 a year. That's $10 a month. Mm -hmm. Boy Scouts is more than that, just for the one kid. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, most other organizations are are quite a bit higher. Um, But that allows the two or three, sometimes three, you know, adults Mm -hmm. in the household um, or whatever the configuration is that makes that household tick uh, to be members as well as their dependent children. And then the the dues for the regular, you know, adult age Grange members are $60 a year. That's $5 a month. And then our our youth, if you are an unencumbered, not covered under a family plan youth, it's 24. Gives us $10 to work with for you to have activities and things, and it gives the 14 for national. Sure. So Pennsylvania's dues um, total are $30 plus the 14 for national, sure. plus Pennsylvania passes down the $1 a year assessment sure. that national has for national convention. So really it's $45 a year leaves us. So by having 60, we really only have $15 a year to work with mm-hmm. per member. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which sounds like a lot of money and certainly is if you're in the position where you're paying for people that don't show up, which mm-hmm. we find often, you know, a lot of mm-hmm. the people who complain the most about the dues are the ones who are paying for many, many other people, a lot of which may not even know that they're being paid for. Um, <laughs> we don't have that in our culture for our new friends <laughs> yet. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. some good things about having a new grain. You don't have some of the things in the culture, but um Notice I broke down by the year and by the month. Mm -hmm. And I did that for a reason. I pay monthly uh, because I pay our family plan, which is my husband and I, because it's exactly equal to if we had 19 kids running around or if it's just us. And then I pay for my dad because, well, he lets us live here. So I guess, (laughs) (laughs) no, No, but you know, I mean, everybody's supposed to pay their own way, right? But he bought this tractor for our Grange to use um, in parades. And so I said to him, I'll cover your dues. So um, anyway, so I pay monthly because that's $15 a month. I didn't have to write a $180 check. And I might work for the National Grange, but I promise you I'm not rich. And so $180 in one shot is a lot of money. And I know that. Um, $120 for a family with a bunch of kids is a lot of money. $60 can be a lot of money in one shot, especially for young people. So Um, we wanted to give the option that everybody else seems to have with a subscription service. PayPal makes it super easy. Mm -hmm. Um, Our website's through Wix. That makes it easy. And so, you know, you can sign up that it automatically takes out of your account every month. But I have a friend who's my age. I mean, we we went to high school together and she is absolutely (laughs) anti putting her card number on anything, um, you know, online. And she said, nope, we will write a check. And I said, okay, (laughs) write a check. Like, that's fine. So they had the option to write the check once a month. They chose to write it, you know, just once. Um, But for the most part, it's you can pay either monthly online, automatic, or you can pay once a year. So it takes out the idea that people are technology phobic. I'm not. I've just gotten over it um, because I'm kind of lazy when it comes to that stuff. But I understand the people who are. They would sure. never have to go to our website for anything. Yeah. Well, and, and I mean, I, I think in, you know, a family membership at $10 a month. Yeah, that is a big chunk, or $120 a year, $10 a month. But you know what? Depending on where you go, that's a cup of coffee. Yeah. Uh, well, and I mean, it would be 90 if we just went with the basic national and state. Right. So granted, we added $30 to that. Right. Um. But, you know, I mean, 90 was already a big chunk of money if you were worried about, you know, that, that type of thing. And I think the nice thing that we've done to add value um, is part of this partnership thing. Several of our local farms um, mm-hmm. have provided, you know, at cost or at a very low price, strawberries for our meetings. 
corn for our meetings, no. peaches for our meetings. Um, the the food and agriculture director, the 16 year old has a plant uh, flower business. And so she brought a bunch of vases and flowers last time. Mm. And so people are walking away with things they can feed their family. They can decorate their home. Sure. Um, and so they're not just coming to a meeting for the meeting's sake, they're coming to get the value back of what they paid. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we have potlucks that are themed around those things. And then we say, this is from this local farm. And we know we've sent a lot of business to one of the local farms that has strawberries still right now, right now, still, because uh, it's, it's called an everberry <laughs> be uh, variety <laughs> that they just introduced. And, um, you know, nobody else has strawberries this time of year. So obviously yeah, everybody that we are telling about this, they go there. So just things like that, that add value, you'll get probably $120 worth of value out of your membership oh, just yeah. by what you can take home. And, and I think, and we, we really do need to wrap this up. Um, I, I, I'm finding myself thinking um, of my own experience as an educator. You know, if I offer free workshops, nobody comes. I shouldn't say that. I mean, there's some people that will come, obviously, but um, I found that attendance goes up if you charge for it because the implication certainly is it has value. I mean, giving stuff away, how much value does it have when you give stuff away? Um, and, th and then, um, you know, the girls all get prettier at closing time. Uh, and for some reason, I'm thinking of that song because the saying that I've always thought goes along with that is if you're there closing time, desperation isn't pretty. Mm. Um, and I, I've used that in the past when I've taught um, like job search techniques and things like that. Um, the best time to look for a job is when you have one, not when you're desperate, not when, when you're out of work and desperate. And, and I think some of that logic applies to our membership um, efforts. Um, you know, it, it, we get, it, and when you were talking about keeping people on the roll that, aren't coming meetings. I mean, keep, I would even go so far as to say keeping people on the roll, paying dues on behalf of members who aren't contributing. Now, and, and that's not to say, and because I know somebody's going to get wound up over this, that you've got somebody uh, who's been a member for 70 years or something like that. I mean, they may not contribute in the sense of coming to a meeting, but they contribute because they contribute to our heritage. Um, and, and they did contribute for all those years. So, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, I don't want to say putting them out of pasture, but, but retiring them. But, but for these younger people, and that can be very relative. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I mean, if you're not going to, if you, 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 we don't need members in name only. I think, you know, um, you know, it was a Groucho Marx that said he would never belong to an organization that would have him as a member. <laughs> um, and, and I look at some of the things we do and I say, why, why would people want to be a member of this organization? You know, um, if we're not, if we don't think we have value, how are we going to sell people on the possibility that we do have value? We didn't get to a lot of things I really wanted to talk about, like the technology thing. That's normal for you and I. Um, yeah. And I know you're going to be getting busy. Um, <laughs> we don't have time to talk about it, but I know you're going to be getting busy with national convention coming up in what, two months. Um, so I don't know that we can practically speak and get you back, but I do want to get some of your members and officers back. And you and I will need to kind of work on that. Um, I guess, uh, wow, uh, we're, coming up on an hour <laughs> which is twice what we had thought we would do um sure any last minute thoughts um, one piece of advice one you know kind of a, a i don't know, you know some inspire us um you know the biggest thing that i figured out out of this is that the grange here even though within its walls struggled they did a great job of maintaining a fantastic reputation in our community. Yeah. And people might have missed them and wondered where they had been. But for the most part, I hate to call it the facade, but the facade was there. Yeah. If that had not been the case, if we had walked back onto our fairgrounds and said we wanted our booth and everybody was like, oh, those people, even though we were not right. the same people, yeah. Um, yeah. but under the name, we would have had a problem. And I know that this is going to sound terrible, but you have to have a good name if you're going to remain relevant and to attract members. 
-hmm. But our motto is Esto Perpetua. And if, if you're happy with your status quo and you're happy where you are, as long as you maintain the good name, I guess my hope is that it will either bring people to you or it will allow that Grange to exist past you. And I know that that sounds terrible, but in reality, I mean, that did us the biggest service mm. of not having a name that was tarnished or having a name that meant something at some point. People still had very good memories of things that that Grange had done. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, in any way that you can build your name recognition in a positive way, that will help you either with the membership now or with its membership in the future. And so I, I that's very kind of off brand and off topic from what you asked, but I, well, I don't think it is. No, I don't, I don't either. I don't either. And, and it's kind of interesting because um, again, talking about Valley Grange here in Maine, <clears throat> we, because so many of our activities are, have been historic. Well, when I say historically, the last 10, 15 years sure. have been oriented towards the schools and kids. We've been, I, I don't want to say dead, but <laughs> we, we dormant at least uh, because we just can't do many of the things that we normally would do because of COVID. Um, and one of the things that, that and, and again, because we're short on time, kind of fast forward here, but one of the things that gives me a great deal of satisfaction is that we haven't lost our reputation. Mm. Um, you know, you, uh, people understand that we, we, there are things we may not be doing at the moment, um, but when the time is right, we'll be back with a vengeance. Uh, and, and I know how, you know, for some reason, I'm remembering a meeting a few years ago we had, uh, and somebody not from the area, uh, I'm sorry, somebody not from the Grange was at our meeting, uh, and they looked around the room and they said to me, where are all your members? <laughs> and I said, well, what do you mean? That most of them are here. Um, and they said, how in the heck do you do all the stuff you do? Yeah. with so few people and and i mean that kind of works against you in one respect because it looks like you don't need help but but it's it's that reputation that you're talking about you know um so you know if you're treading water and and, and lord knows we've got a lot of granges not just in maine that All have over, been yeah. treading water because of covid uh that's okay you know i think I, I, and that's a message that i don't think we're saying often enough is it's okay it's okay that you make and i know granges that haven't met in a year Right. No, it's okay. It's okay. But as long as you haven't lost your reputation. Right. And the one thing that I would say is because you have that reputation, you can leverage it today. Yeah. And and that sending the letters that I'm talking about that we're going to send to the the local you know sensory garden folks and the kids that raised the garden and did the lemonade stand and a few others that we identified. Mm -hmm. Um Again, that, that could be selfish, but it's also, it's very good at saying that we appreciate what they're bringing to our community and our quality of life. That is something that every Grange can do. Yeah. And if you haven't met for a year, if you haven't been able to do your normal programming, you know what values are important to the members of your Grange. Faith, hope, charity, fidelity, perseverance. If, if those don't center you, something else will, local sustainability and resilience, right? Something that you can put in words will, will be a key. And I, I see no reason why in this period of time, you can't leverage your reputation with something like as simple as, yeah. hey guys, phone chain, hey guys, have you seen this story in the paper about Sheila who started up a food bank on her porch? Mm -hmm. Let's send her a letter thanking yeah. her for being I love it. you know a caring yeah. part of the community yeah. because the reputation is something that you can use to make that thank you and maybe they come and maybe they don't but it continues to keep the name out there and it continues frankly to pat people on the back to make them keep going yeah yeah i and, and that's another important role of the grange i mean i think we you know, we do an annual and many granges do an annual community uh, we do a community night, but uh, part of that is the Community Citizen Award, which yeah. is recognizing that kind of behavior. And, and now you're making me think that uh, when we give the Community Citizen Award, maybe we ought to give them a free membership in the Grange. <laughs> and, and I'm not going to comment because I know what the bylaws say, but I did I mention that every Grange seems to be breaking something. So yes. Yes. whatever it does, it does. I think, you yes, know, just inviting the them in, getting them into the yeah. doors and making them see that there are other people in their community like them yeah 
Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Anyway, we really do need to be out of time, unfortunately. Um, wow, this has been fun. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. I am so excited to have some of our, our new members come on and talk about their Grange experience. Yeah. Because I think we all kind of talk a Grange shorthand. Um, well, that's true, too. <laughs> and it's so neat. It is so neat to watch Grange through the eyes of some of these new people. Yeah. You know, yeah. to watch them see a hall for the first time or, or talk to other members who have been 50 years in and done service projects and, you know, yeah. kept up a building or yeah. kitchens Ice or whatever. They, you know, yeah. They're amazed and I'm excited that they're amazed. And it's just, if there's nothing that can feed your energy and Grange, go figure out a way to start a new Grange. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. It, will, it will make you double down. Yeah. And I, I need to get you back on. It, in the role of National Grange da, 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 um, to talk about wh what National is doing, because I know you've been traveling around looking for opportunities to start new Granges. And I, I know there's some, because you've already kind of sent some of it to me, I've got a, a little bit of a preview of some of the material that you're going to make available uh, to yep. help us uh, as we try to grow the uh, our Granges. So, so, yeah, so much more we could talk about. I mean, I think we need to do more of that. We need to, to start talking about the positive stuff. You know, you know, fraternal concerns are great, are great uh, but you know, let's let's feature new members. Let's let's do some some fun stuff. So uh, with that, thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you our... for uh, pulling this together and for having such a, <laughs> I know, it's a great it's been fun a while coming. Platform. <laughs> so. If you want something done, give it to busy people, right? That's uh, right. <laughs> it's it's right. been a while coming, but I think it was worth it. Um, to our viewers, thank you for joining us today. We hope you found this helpful and encouraging. Uh, if there's something else you'd like to hear or see on resources for Grangers, the Maine State Grange program brought to you by the Communications Department, let us know. We'll be happy to try to put it together. Even though this hasn't been a Grange meeting, and I, and I love the way we've kind of ended because I think um, it's it's that whole idea of, of of the connection. You know, we tend to see the Grange, I think, sometimes as a as an island, um, and and we really need to see the connection between the Grange and 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 there's an ellipsis there because it really does depend on what what the hot buttons are, if you will in your area or in your community. So I, I feel like it's appropriate for us to end this way as there is no more work for us today and we are again to separate. Let us not forget the principles of our order. Let us add dignity to labor um, and uh, be honest, be just, fear not. Love that one right now. <laughs> let us be quiet. God, I love this. Let us be quiet and peaceful citizens feeding the hungry helping the fatherless and the widows and the widowers and, and, and we could certainly expand that um, and keep ourselves unspotted from the world. The patron places his faith in God. I can do this. <laughs> Nurtures hope, dispenses charity, and is noted for fidelity. <laughs> <laughs>